It's that time again. Welcome back to the SPL. My name's Hindu Man. Joining me on the desk for the start of the day is going to be Anna Tolley. Pro League action is all about North America today. Tolley, you've got some interesting games. The first ones we're going to see is Space Station Gaming against Luminosity, a team that's thriving so far in the summer split against one that's still struggling. Well, if you're not used to the SPL and how things go, let's start off having a look at throughout the whole year of how things are going to break down. We're already through spring and we're into summer already. After that, we'll be having the Smite All-Stars and it all accumulates to the World Championships in November. A little bit sooner than your traditional January first week for the HRX, so make sure you put away those winter coats and bring a light sweater instead. <laughs> a light sweater, that's yeah. a nice way of putting it. Also, World Championships, if you do want to get your tickets for the World Championships, you guys can get them right about now. Head over to HireSExpo.com. It's going to be November 16th to the 18th at DreamHack Atlanta. Going to be able to have a lot of action there, not just Smite, but the console action, Paladins World Championship, and console Paladins. we got a whole show for you. And then, obviously, this is Tuesday. we still got the rest of the week. Is it Tuesday? Today's Wednesday. It's Wednesday. Did it after. But this is only Wednesday, but this is how the schedule looks for Wednesday and every other day of the week. Monday through Friday, we broadcast consistent amounts of Smite. Weekends, we broadcast the SPL. Well, SPL, Tully, begins at 3 o'clock, which is about now. That's true. Getting into North America. And keep in mind, every Monday is that eSports Weekly before we actually see some sort mm. of competition where you can see a lot of shenanigans. Well, enough of that. Let's get on to today. Have a look at the standings over in North America, first of all, and have a little look at how things are going. Actually, no, this is the schedule, first of all. That's my bad. This is the schedule for the week so far. We're on to Wednesday, and it's all about North America, as we mentioned. The rest of the week, though, still got some EU sets to play on Thursday and some more on Friday from North America. After Space Station versus Luminosity, we'll see Trifecta against Splice. So could be an interesting matchup at the end of the day just to see how these teams really stack up against each other because the standings are very important considering that we're in week two. These teams need some early momentum to right. transition to get closer to the land. Yeah, and here's a little look at the standings for you all as well. Space Station, top of the shop with two wins out of two games played. Right behind them is a United side at one and one overall with their performances. At the bottom of the pile in North America, is Counter Logic Gaming. Three losses so far. Alongside Luminosity just struggling a little bit as they mm. lost to Splice and E United in the first week. And that's why this matchup is an important one for both of these teams because SSG doesn't want to have LG play spoiler to them. They need to still find this win to secure themselves in the top two position. Whereas Luminosity, they don't want to fall behind too early. So they need to start raking in some of these early wins. You're right, Tolly. Obviously, the split is only six weeks long through summer. And all these teams will play each other twice so it's very important to get off to a good start space station gaming have done that so far totally how do you feel about this roster so far this year it's been a lot of diversity in terms of their picks and bands but still the same all-star performance from baskin specifically whenever he gets the thaw off it's just lights out but because of the healing meta it's been a lot of a different style for aquarius that straight away from some of his more aggressive warriors trying to get those late game changas online well, at the end of the day, a lot of people were talking about mid being the focal point during spring, but as it transitioned towards summer, more and more is talking about the junglers. And Aninsta himself has had a pretty solid performance moving back towards the jungler tilt. That's the best way to describe Aninsta. He's always just going to be playing solid because of how comfortable he is with a supporting cast around him, playing with Jeff Hilla, Barracuda, some old friends of Baskin as well. A lot of history between those four players and Aquarius has made a very easy fit to Aninsta's style of play because every now and and then he'll have one of those games where he'll want to be aggressive in the soul lane and Aquarius can fit that hole. Very solid performances throughout the split from Aninsta, specifically as well through spring, but also his god pull, very eclectic. He showed off that he's quite happy to move around and do whatever's required. I mean, that's what you need from your jungler that dictates the pacing of Season 5 with the shortened duration of the buffs going from 3 to 2 minutes. This is what you need. You, you can't fall to behind too early, specifically in the jungle. So Space Station 2-1 over United in Week 1 and 2-0 over CLG. Now take on Luminosity Gaming, led by Weekend alongside Keegs and Gino with this roster. How do you feel they've been doing so far, Tully? They've not had the performances we've expected, I guess. They have the name in the roster, but you had hit the nail right on the head. It's just they haven't had the performance against some of these mm -hmm. other teams because the reason specifically is how aggressive Weekend is every now and then. It's do or die the way his style is. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. A lot of against these experienced teams are used to that style and they made those adaptations. So 
It's kill or be killed for LG, and unfortunately, they're on the lesser end of that. Okay, well, we're going to go to a quick break momentarily. We'll be back after this very short break. I'm joking. I'm joking. I apologize for the audio issues we were having a little bit earlier on. They've been taken care of now, but we're already ready for this set. We've kept you waiting long enough. Space Station Gaming up against Luminosity. The top versus the bottom of North America as it stands right now, Tolly. Picks and bands, a very important factor here. David versus Goliath matchup based off of the standings. Two to nothing compared to 0 to 2. Luminosity need to find their footing in this set. Similar style in terms of the junglers wanting to be aggressive. Anister can make more adaptations and is more fine, I think, about just waiting to see what Weekend's going to be able to do. So I think that LG needs to find a way to allow Weekend a lot of freedom with whatever he wants to do. And that's by getting better side lane pressure, making sure that they have the waves pushed under the towers and then look for those collapsing invades. Okay, well, I know Space Station Gaming, they like to try and pressure the dual lane a lot of the time. Sylvanas and X is kind of the call for them. We've seen the majority of that. Toph and Athena band out. LG don't want to deal with that long range of Toph, giving that to Baskin, allowing him to sit really far back in a safe area here. I think it was the very first set we saw where it was e United against Space Station Gaming. Both Venanu and Baskin piloting that Thoth very fantastically. Venanu popped off game one, games two and three. It was Baskin that had that opportunity. LG doing their homework. Chunga first pick. First pick, Chunga. What year is this? It's 2018, Hindu man, in the summer split, and this is the healer meta at its fullest. Changa is not one of these picks wow. that you would assume right. to have high priority, but the way Aquarius pilots it, he's very safe, he's very careful in the solo lane. He actually wants to get ganked every now and then because of how effective he is at escaping the pressure. Totally, is it playable mid as well, this Changa? Not as much as solo lane because you need the blue buff to be able to spam the abilities. Well, what about jungle? Jungle would be better because you do have Assassin's Blessing. Uh, even though you do have the bunny, you still need to rely on some sort of outside sustain and Assassin's Blessing or the blue buff will help that. I just want to see, like, you, you first pick Chunga, you don't want to l l allow the enemy team to know exactly where it's going straight away. So maybe a little bit of versatility there. Sylvanas, Jing, Wei, dual lane pressure from SSG as always. They really like to have that pressure wherever possible and King's gonna go straight back to his tried true and tested Poseidon. He likes this pick it does a lot of damage not that many teams have been scrimming against Poseidon in season five so the fact that he has his little pocket pick to bring out every now and then kind of throws oppositions for a little bit of a curveball so SSG need to make sure that they don't pick gods that rely on heavy dash engages because that cripple is going to stop them. I do like Poseidon into a Sylvanas too. Sylvanas kind of struggles because of the whirlpool Kraken combination that he's so susceptible to. And Jing Wei as well. Obviously, she can't dash out of that cripple field. Whirlpool, very impactful. Raven and a Wheelix taking away some options from Amninster in the jungle at LG. Whereas SSG, well, taking away the Guan Yu that was left up all the way through the first phase. Not seen that for a while. And of course, an Odin. Well, you got two healers, Tully. You don't want to be strapped in a ring. That's true. Very important to take away the Odin. It's not just the anti-healing specifically. It's the fact that you need to invest into a Phantom that makes it so more obnoxious because you want to have your team fighting relics. The sprints, the shells, the meditations, whatever the case may be. The fact that LG already has Sarket is a good enough anti-healing option. So I'm not too worried the fact that they don't have the Odin. Well, Mercury's locked in here, more than likely for Anster, and the final pick will dictate who's playing that Chunga, which we expected to be Aquarius. Scylla on top of that. Well, 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 not seeing too much Scylla, only really Basket. Every now and then we'll see Scylla from other teams in different regions and different leagues, but not so much in the pro league. Baskin's mechanics are just next level. Uh, streaming every now and then some practice of a Scylla gameplay, so I'm expecting some flashy stuff here today. Talk about flashy stuff. Cobracken's back again. We saw him in the jungle yesterday, played piloted by Cherio, but today I think that's a solo link. Cobracken, that time. It definitely could be, as Kiki so cheeky likes to, you know, mix things up with the best of them. And against the Changa, you don't always need anti healing to deal with her. If you can find ways to block her pathing to receive more damage, that's the game plan. Have Cabrankin and Circuit probably camp this Changa all early game. I will say Space Station Gaming's comp area seems to be sustain and self-peel are the big two factors here. Mercury very good at self-peel, same for Jingwei and Scylla to an extent. 
Whereas Chunga Sylvanas can just resustain them back That's up. That's true. It's a wombo combo between the jungle mid synergy of Baskin and Anister and Luminosity. Need to avoid it if they want to survive to the mid to late game. Game one, how are we feeling? Who's, who's favorite into this? Well, obviously Space Station based off of the standings, but composition wise, I still got to give it to Space Station with the double wombo combo, Anister and Baskin always feeling themselves and then Chango Sylvanas double sustain. I like this. I'm looking at Weaken here on the circuit. It's got to shut down those healers and maybe Keeks can get set up for a couple of kills. Let's find out though. The casters are standing by to bring you game one. Finch and Aggro here. We're going to be looking at Space Station Gaming up against LG. And this draft from Space Station Gaming, lots of sustain in there. And it's getting to play the Mercury. I mean, I like it. How are you feeling about it? Man, first pick Chonga. What is the world we're living in now, right now, Finch? And I, <laughs> I just really, I don't mind Space Station's comp. It's not my favorite composition, but their Space Station, they'll likely make it work. Sure. I just do not like picking the Poseidon into the Chonga at all. I mean, that is, when you go up against Robin or Chonga, as it's Poseidon, hard. you just feel like you lose all of your effectiveness in the early game. And it's likely that, that Keegs won't be seeing Aquarius in the early game. I mean, soul laners usually aren't going to be rotating over that early, specifically when you're sure. playing something like Changa. But still, man, I, I don't like it very much. Well, who do you all think is going to win? Go ahead and vote for us in the Mixer poll and let us know. Sounds like, Ryan, you may be leaning a little bit towards Space Station here. I mean, I... I I don't know how you feel about it. Yeah. What are you trying to swing the chat here? I'm, I'm trying, I'm trying not to see trying what to, you think here. I'm right? not trying to swing the chat. I'm going to wait for them to vote, and then I'm going to give my opinions afterwards. <laughs> that's I right. Don't we want to, poll integrity. That's right. right. Yeah, I'm yeah, not yeah. trying to uh, to affect this uh, <laughs> this sort of voting system at all. Well, you were talking about how Poseidon might not do as well in the Chang as it sounds like we are just about ready to move here into game one and get the action started for you all. But I'm curious to see how Weaken and potentially Keegs could punish Jeff Hinlow on this Sylvanas. I mean, they do have a good chance to grab him with the last breath and then have plenty of set for the crack that's got to be the plan if you're on luminosity is punish jeff hinla early and often because sylvanas Minions. does so much in the early game for his teams yeah but is also still very vulnerable post level five it's going to be jeff using wrath of terror to try and immune that knock up stun combo from the kraken to immune the damage coming from weakens combination those are going to be very very important to make sure that he can stay safe no shell for him early. Instead, it goes for the sprint. So if I'm on Luminosity, I'm trying to kill Jeff Hinla three or four times before he gets to that mid game. And it feels like that's what it takes, right? To really stop a Sylvanas from doing what a Sylvanas wants to do. Even if you kill him a couple times, you know, the Wisp will still be there. The Wrath of Terra is still great setup. A big pull really can just change a fight by itself if suddenly one person's out of position. So you got to make sure that you're all in and can try and prevent the Sylvanas from doing the Sylvanas things. That Kabrakan selection of the solo lane, part of the reason why we see it is because of what we just witnessed over there is Kiki can just press three and go get a drink of water, uh, you know, get his hands nice and ready because you don't have to do a whole lot. Chonga is not going to be interrupting that anytime soon. This is a I want to farm up to mid game and try and make a bigger impact than you uh, it's sort of selection to me because Kiki's kill potential, even post level five, doesn't seem that exciting, and he's going to need to find great walls if he does want to find those kills. We saw it there in the polls, at least in Mixer chat. Space Station Gaming seemed to be the heavy favorites, and I think... I would vote for Space Station, by the way. And I think for the most part that uh, Mixer chat got it right there. I mean, Space Station looking so strong, had a great performance at LAN as Anderson and Weaken kind of exchanging blows in the jungle. Keegs and Gino are on their way, though. This could be trouble for the Mercury, depending on how they try and cut off this escape path. Looks like Keegs went with the Trident, so he might not have that work. Not the usual pick up a level two for Poseidon players. Usually you get your title surge, your first ability, because then you can 3-1 the wave and basically insta-clear it. But I guess Keegs was more worried about his camp uh, clear speed, because actually that is better with your trident. Sure. So a little bit of a switch up. And also good movement speed as Barracuda takes a lot of pokes, so maybe it helps him get over there a little faster. I mean, certainly some, you know, any reason why Keys might want to grab that one up. We, we trust him to be making the right call. He's been make, he's had an excellent performance here in Season 5, just in general. Even when LG were struggling, when they were looking good, it looked like that was through Keegs. When they were struggling, Keegs still looked great. So he's been a real boon, I feel like, for this squad. He really has been, and it's been an exciting debut uh, season for him, basically. So far here in season five, obviously a world champion on the console side yeah. with Myth Gaming last year. And he's really shown that uh, the, the console scene is catching up to, to the PC side and that there are players who can definitely make that transition. Sino proved it the year before. Now Keeg's mate, starting to see it on the on the minor league and even as well with 
Uh, Anxiety Onset had a lot of really talented players come over from the box, inbound, erupt Crimson, those sorts of dudes who, who won their set earlier on today. And that's what the, the idea is, right? You know, the SPL is where you want to be, but it's only six teams. Part of making sure there's the best competition possible. And so when a team is struggling, I mean, they got a place to go look for talent that's in a league format, that's playing all the time, like we saw there with Paul Keegs. They get to come up here to the SPL and show their stuff, as Aquarius might be in trouble. Looks like no, he's not, because uh, you can just kind of some immune stuff if you're Chang'e. It's a pretty good ability, isn't it? Getting uh, Seems good and Aegis <laughs> on, a, on a low cooldown. That is pretty solid. Oh, and it returns mana, too, but that's not that big of a deal, I suppose. Uh, look, Aquarius has made this pick look unbeatable in the solo lane, and it certainly isn't. There are definitely things you can do to, to bully this Chang'e in lane, camp it, uh, pick gods that can play well around it, don't let her step up to that wave nearly as well. But until someone does that to Aquarius, why not continue to not only pick it, but pick it early and often? Because that, you have to make someone prove that they can punish you for it. And I've got no problem with Space Station taking a loss later on this year because they, uh, the enemy team knew they were picking Chang'a solo in a particular situation. That doesn't bother me at all. you got to make someone prove that they can beat up on it. But in the meantime, get the rest of your picks ready and for whenever that day does come. Because it will happen eventually. It's so tough, though, because for, for you to make the commitment on Aquarius in the solo lane, wouldn't, it would kind of require things to be even everywhere else, and then we'll make the commitment here. But are you ever, even if you're the mid laner going up against Baskin or up against a Jeff Hinla Barracuda duo lane? You know, it's just, it, it's so strong, so stacked, this Space Station roster, that it does kind of create the space for Aquarius to do this pick and not have to worry about getting punished as much. Though I agree, there's some room to do a little more than what we've seen. Space Station is the kind of squad that can punish you if you do go sit on Aquarius. Kiki's ultimate down on cooldown now. Trying to make that make it happen onto Aquarius and didn't really do a whole lot of damage. Wonder if it was just for wave clear with this blue buff coming up, but he's still got minions left standing, so that didn't if that was the plan, that didn't really work out either. And keep in mind, it looks like Kiki had to use the teleport, Ryan. And not only is Aquarius still holding on to his, but with that Chang'a passive with the Jade Rabbit, he doesn't need it unless he's really low on mana and has to like back for that reason. He can still buy items from here and, and have that Rabbit bring him to him. So Aquarius can kind of wait Kiki out and maybe try and force him back at a time when he'll miss some farm. Both junglers lurking and Anister charging the ultimate. The ultimate, ultimate is hit. there on the Kiki. The commit is, is ready. I think Anister might have went a little bit too far on the ultimate for what he wanted. Now Last Breath comes out from Weekend. Anister in a lot of trouble. He is going to be able to retreat. Ambush is hesitating there from Weekend and instead just goes to clear the wave, but not going to be able to find him. Kraken used on the rotation in the jungle to stop Baskin from getting close enough. That cost Baskin his purification beads, so good cutoff there by Keeg's mate and Gino to make sure that there is no help coming on that right-hand side. Yeah, a little bit uh, uncoordinated there, un uncharacteristically so on both sides, I would say. Andy, as you mentioned, goes too far on the sonic boom, get, way overshoots Kiki. And then uh, the, the lack of purification beads makes him eat a ton of damage. Then he uses it late. And we can certainly could have confirmed that kill if he just pulled the trigger on the ambush a bit earlier. Jeff Himla, though, Wrath of Tira knocks up two. Gino jumps away. Keeks still here, but we can keeps too busy on the backside, forces the ultimate out from Basket in response. No damage. And they have to use the sprint. Space Station kind of had to run away there. Gino, uh, that was the target, Gino, with that pull and ultimate combo from Jeff. But Basket needs to be in the ultimate as soon as the pull goes off if he wants to make sure that he can get that kill or even the damage off, because I don't think right. that. I'm a monster necessarily kills there. The target should have been Keeg's mate, I believe, but Keeg's was a little bit out of range. Still had the purification beads up. Good idea from Space Station. You see that a lot from this team, especially so far in Season 5, where Jeff will try and make something happen, and Insta will make something happen that requires perfect timing and precision, and it ends up not working out for them. But the thing I appreciate about this team is that they don't stop trying to go for that. Yeah. Because they do hit it occasionally, and just because they don't hit it every time doesn't mean it's not worth attempting or not worth it to use that investment in those situations. So it uh, didn't work out for Space Station, but I like the I like where their head's at. Yeah, that, that trust they have in each other certainly there. The situation we were alluding to in Solo, though, did just end up happening. Kiki had to back without the teleport a little while ago, so that might be part of where Aquarius is starting to build this little bit of a lead because he got to back and come right back in right away as he's now a little bit XP-wise ahead of Kiki with Weekend over on this side of the map with him as well, and he makes the rotation. So if there is any action, at least be the full two on two. And Anister, again, as soon as he clears blue, he's spending a lot of time in solo. This is something that uh, it looks like Luminosity has identified with Space Station's 
patterns throughout the year. Is Peaky going to use that ultimate? Traps in Aquarius. Nice Good ultimate, ult. though. Gets both. And that forces Weaken and Kiki back. Aquarius needed no help there at all. That was all Aquarius just forcing those two back by himself. And that's where this Cabracken pick, I just don't think, does enough to shut down Changa in the early game. She, she's really not that worried about the burst damage that's coming from his kit because she can guarantee immune at least one, the, the one or the two or the ultimate. And Cabracken really needs all three of those to land if he wants to deal his full damage. Yeah, that wall really served more of a defensive purpose than an offensive one. I don't know if it was intentional, but it was not going to be. Andy really couldn't have ulted in and hit both of them True. to follow up because of that wall. I doubt that's the point, but because they try to lock in Aquarius, it does kind of lock Andy out. So perhaps inadvertently that helps out with that engagement. I'm sure they would have rather been the aggressors, but and Aquarius just kind of walks away from that one, picks up the Void Stone as he did make the actual trip back to base this time, and he's ready to come walk back into lane. It's a fair point that, you know, maybe that is one of the reasons we see the Cabracken pick up, not having a Thor or Ymir that could wall off, and it's just dash walls or something that mer really hurt Mercury. Sure. And uh, kind of a counter pick opportunity for Luminosity. They take a Bracken in the last slot. And that do if, that's, if that's another... Guardian, if that's a Sobek or something like that, Weaken gets obliterated there by Andenser's ult, and Kiki likely does as well. So the Cabracken pickup has worked out, at least in that regard. It's one way that it's helped out, as Weaken's now rotated back to the mid lane. He's lurking in the jungle, but I don't know if he's looking to try and come in and fight here in the mid lane, as Baskin says hello to Gino, but not in a nice way. Takes a good chunk of his health away, and the hammer doesn't land either. Weaken came to check for farm, nothing there, so he'll just have to retreat. Is moving now towards Aquarius, though, who's in the jungle. Blue buff is about to spawn, so good timing as Cobra's Kiss and Last Breath are going to do good damage. Ultimate, though, good lets ult. him trade half back. Man, if Weaken hits that auto attack, Aquarius might end up dying there because that was all three poison stacked on him with that Sir Cat passive, but Aquarius right on time with that waxing moon to save his own life. By the way, Aninster loses his beads coming into mid lane the way that he did in front of Keeg's mate a little bit earlier on when Baskin was poking out Gino. Something to keep an eye on. That's important. And it's sir, especially heads over to that solo side again and weaken or Kiki is able to stun or able to land that last breath. He could certainly fall into trouble. So that's important as the blue buff gets taken away from Aquarius without having Anister over there. The 2v1 that time does favor them out. Weaken forces Aquarius back. They steal away that blue buff. Early on, that's a big detriment to the Chang'a, but I mean, now that Aquarius is level 11, Tim and Sin, I mean, I don't know if it's a big deal, just one by itself. No, and Jeff Henlow, we just saw it there, planted a, planted a root underneath his tower, so Aquarius was getting that much more Good guy, Jeff extra MP5. That's actually a really big deal for Chang'a in the solo lane, because normally that would force her back to base. Now it probably won't be as big of a deal for Aquarius in that lane. And I got to say, I, I really think that weakens insistence on being at the blue buff every single time or at least on that side of the map every single time blue buff is spawning has been really really key for luminosity and ended up paying off there in a small way but now aninster it needs to know that all right every time blue buffs up i gotta be there or else luminosity is going to steal it away and that could ultimately end up in a gold fury pool from lg in one or two more respawns or it could be the opposite i mean space station if if, if weekend's going to be on a timer that way uh, knowing where the jungler is on the map ahead of time could be a boon for Space Station. If they trust Aquarius in the 2v1, they could try and make something happen on their own, just sort of sure. give up on that blue bus. So it, it depends on what the call is. Do they trust Aquarius in this one v in the 2v1? You know, do they think that a 4v3 is enough for them to pull a gold fury or steal some buffs? That's the call Space Station have to make as Jeff Hindler rotates over to help out this time. We can ward those XP camps, but they aren't up right now. Aquarius gets his extra bit of physical protection from silver breastplate and that'll help out in this little skirmish that's looking like it's about to go down on this right side. Oh, it really is. Kiki is coming in now and they are going to start trying to strip away this blue buff. Andenster and Basket have started to make the rotation. They're going to take the shorter path. Weekend kind of stuck in no man's land. Not sure if he wants to go in. And it looks like the call from Luminosity is not to all in commit. At least not just yet. Keeg's mate could be hunting Baskin. He's kind of isolated here on this left side. Baskin puts about half HP down for Gino. Four on four for a blue buff. This is uh, this is the Changa sort of situation. Beans had to come out already. They dropped the ultimate onto Kiki. So Cheeky, who's Three low, ups. Baskin hits with the crush. Special delivery brings him right back in. But Kiki still stands. Tectonic shift not going to be enough. Aquarius finds him. I'm a monster. Brings weakened very very low. Sprint comes out trying to help him disengage. Space Station find first blood and are able to force LG back. LG just is in such an awkward spot there. They couldn't get in to help Kiki. I mean, that was three ultimates committed to make sure that Kiki fell. And 
it ultimately didn't end up costing Space Station. This is good, though. Barracuda still has the airstrike ultimate. If he can bring Clout low enough, this should be a pretty good kill. Misses a few autos, but Baskin rotates in, cuts off the path with the crush right into the Sikkim. That's two kills for Space Station now to punish Clout's overaggression. Nice cutoff there by Baskin. That was after Blue Buff got stolen away from Space Station, so they get two kills. They lose their Tier 1 tower for it, but they get the first Blood Bounty and a buff invade on that right side in addition to the extra kill on to Clout. Good cutoff from Barracuda as well to come behind Clout in that instance. Most of the time you'll see Hunters just kind of go into the top side of their enemy mid lanes, clear the wave, and then start to rotate towards the fight on the right-hand side. The fight was already over uh, from Luminosity's point of view, so Clout instead decides to hang around and try and get a tower, but Barra punishes him for it. Also goes back to the fact that Clout is, is pretty far behind in his stacks. Barracuda's been done for a little bit now. Clout still at only at 57, just got up to 57 by getting that tower and that wave. And he just got that balance blade. He was sitting on just the boots and the not fully stacked Devo gloves, whereas Barra has had that short bow, I believe. So that, that was a big difference in power. And Barracuda has been kind of free to have that 1v1 against Clout this whole time, as it looks like Red Buff was stripped away as well. We can see it on Baskin and Barracuda here now. Clout has to be careful. Barracuda is going to go in aggressive with the agility beads to get away from that EI Jitsu stun. Heavenly Banner gave a little bit extra attack speed. A gets to avoid the airstrike. So now Barracuda has to retreat, as it looks like Keeks and Jeff Hindler were traded out one for one. Oh, Baskin so low. Good Aegis saves him from mounted archery. Has the I'm a monster as well. Weaken. Wow. Can't get the auto attack. Barra punishes him for going in. Baskin decides not to try and get greedy with that I'm a monster. Instead, yes. retreats, but here comes Kiki. And now Kiki could be in trouble. He gets hit by the Sikkim and the Crush. No one to follow up on that one. More for the peel than anything. But that's such a great point. Baskin does not try and use the I'm a monster to get a last bit of damage in. He makes sure he stays as far away from Weaken's basic attack as possible. And that's what sets up the kill on the Weaken and keeps Baskin alive. I love that heads up awareness. But even though they made that trade one for one because I believe Jeff Hindler dropped as well, Space Station feels like still come out on top. Yeah, I have to because they got two for one in total, right? Because uh, Keeg's made ended up falling there on the top left side in exchange for Jeff Hinla, then Weaken goes down whenever he tries to chase down Baskin. So anytime Je it's Jeff for members of the enemy, for any amount of members on the enemy team, Space Station and Jeff Hinla will tell you that that's worth it because that's what Jeff loves to do is sacrifice himself for enemy kills. But it's particularly in that situation when it's mid and jungle for a support, absolutely in Space Station's favor. Now that is part of where they've given up a little bit is that Jeff Hinla has kind of fallen behind and farmed some to Gino. Just ticked over level 10 while Gino's been there for a little while. But I think that Space Station, as you said, are happy to take that in exchange for everyone else being ahead in their direct uh, matchup. Uh, Quare's ahead, Andy's ahead, Baskin, Barracuda. So if, if it means Jeff Hinla's got to be a little bit behind, then so be it. That is the most Space Station sort of XP differential you'll ever see, right? Everyone except for Jeff is ahead and Jeff's behind because that's the, a lot of the reason why these guys can get ahead is because Jeff is not taking waves, not right. trying to steal farm from any of the enemy members. You can see it right here in the charts, about a 4,000 experience lead going the way of Space Station game, about 1,500 gold as well. And Luminosity, this is not something that they cannot fight into, but Space Station are just slowly building themselves up a lead despite this continued presence onto Aquarius and that solo jungle side. It has not really netted them anything. Aquarius is 1-0-0, he's fine. As LG control the vision around Goldfear, they might be thinking about pulling this with the Fafnir course. Well, Aquarius, now that he's level 12 or higher, went for Phantom instead of an Aegis or a Beats. Full commit by LG onto this Gold Fury, but immediately Space Station show up. Baskin used the ultimate, and I think that's the reason that LG is okay resetting there. If that's all right. for nothing, then that feels kind of bad, but Gino's still in his ultimate form, still gets use out of it, where Baskin is on cooldown. They're ready to start pulling, and now Sprint comes out. Space Station, no, they've got to get into this pit soon, but not in time. Kraken, too good of secure. Anister does land the Opa Clout CC immune on the horse, so will escape Barracuda catches Gino, though, after the transformation, oh, but no. the pull was a little bit too soon. Gino still not able to be pulled back in, and so he'll survive. Man, just a hair too early there by Jeff Hinla. Gino was in a bad spot, but I love that confidence from Luminosity. Trust that Kraken is going to secure it. I don't know that Kraken was what secured that Gold Fury, but if it works, it works. And sure. it worked there for LG. So coming out in their favor. They didn't really have to give much up except for these two Tier 1 towers in return and Duo and in mid lane. And even some pings come out on the Pyromancer. Anninster might want to have that take a look at too. But Space Station, despite losing the Gold Fury, 
Doesn't feel like they really lost too much because they did go into the jungle and grab those towers and kind of force Luminosity back. That's about the best answer you could ask for after that Gold Fury. And got Purification Beats from Keegs, Ultimate out from Clout. But that, I mean, the ultimate not as big of a deal, but Keeg's losing beads for a while. That is scary stuff against Scylla. You need beads and Aegis pretty much all the time if you don't want to put yourself in a horrible spot. Now this they do not want to let happen, and it's it's too late. It has happened. LG now claim the Pyromancer for themselves along with the Gold Fury. Both neutral objectives going to side of LG. And Space Station kind of just sleeping a little bit on that one, backing and Luminosity recognizing the time. Good ward coverage on both sides around objectives in particular. Luminosity has a lot of wards dotted in and around that, that jungle, but around the actual objectives, it's all red vision. That's Luminosity. So that's just good identification of where we need to put our wards and what those wards actually gained LG. In that situation, it, the Gold Fury less so, but certainly the Pyromancer. That's just because someone decided to spend 120 gold and get an, uh, get an extra Sentry Ward. And it's helped out for them. Got them a little bit closer back towards the Space Station squad. And, and Space Station weren't building their leads off objective controls anyway. You know, they were, they were farming a little bit more efficiently. They were okay with letting Jeff not split as many ways. They were stealing camps when they could. So LG are trying to close that gap back up by way of these objectives. And it's working so far. But this is all some, something that Luminosity is going to need to keep in mind is that Aquarius is going to join these team fights eventually. And eventually, Luminosity is going to need to deal with the healing that both he and Jeff Hinla will put out, especially once that Rod of Healing has been upgraded into a Rod of Asclepius for Aquarius as he's working on that extra last bit of gold for that. Yeah. And I think that this Phantom pickup is one that makes me a little bit nervous. I mean, Kiki's ultimate is a big deal, but you can use your auto attacks to bring it down. You've got multiple characters that have pretty a quick attack speed, and Anster does. Jeff Hinla can hit multiple walls at once, basically. Uh, Barracuda is going to be able to bring those walls down pretty quickly. Not having beads or Aegis, I know that Chonga has the immune in the kit, but that, that does worry me a little bit if I'm rooting for Space Station. It feels like more respect than has been earned as Kiki attacks Bass and drops Tectonic Shift, but they pull him right back into the Wrath of Terra and into the I'm a Monster. Jeff Hinla eats the Kraken to the face. Kiki just barely survives. Aquarius did not have enough damage to bring him all the way down. Tier 1 Tower, though, falls on the right-hand side and weakened. Blink over the wall. Last breath onto Baskin, trying to take him out early, he and he it. does. He spread it to Aquarius. That's what Weekend was trying to do. Whoa. Andy going in for Keeg's mate. Well-timed Aegis saves Keeg's from the Mage you look, and it's there should have an easy escape path out towards mid lane here. But this is something that we've seen from Clout all season five long. His willingness to back and join team fights on hit on the other side of the map towards the solo lane has been better than just about every other hunter, and that's what made the difference there was Clout joining up. Also, Keegs' Kraken was excellent. A little bit of an overcommit onto the onto the Kabraken out of yeah. the solo lane as well from Space Station. But Keegs' Kraken got both relics out from Baskin. And then Clout's mounted archery brought everyone low enough the Luminosity win that team fight because of it. It's a great job. As you said, it, it's Kiki kind of forcing the collapse for everyone else. I mean, he drops the tectonic shift and Aquarius. I mean, no, no one on Space Station is worried about that wall. That's why we come back to this question on the Phantom there, right? I mean, he could have gone a more selfish relic, but if he's building shell in that, in that slot, so spray, I mean, does that help them there more? I, I don't know that it does necessarily, but keep in mind, upgraded phantom is kind of like old shell. You get sure. percent damage mitigation. So once Aquarius is finished off a Rod of Asclepius, I'd love to see him just upgrade that phantom immediately and basically have a shell for his team. That also, coincidentally, will get them through Kabrakin Wall. I think that's Aquarius' thought process here. Well, hopefully that is what they end up going with. Is At this point, it hadn't really been too much of a problem for him, but Finally, Baskin ends up taking his seat. We can able to find him there in that fight with the blink over the wall, and he's building a little bit safer, as we can hear on this circuit. Has the Magi's cloak already. Try and get away from some of this control. See if that helps him out. Interestingly enough, it's Jeff Hindle who has the Pestilence on the side of Space Station, not yet for Luminosity. In fact, actually the mantle that's come out is Handinster goes in with the big time ultimate. Can't find really much of anyone, has to retreat. Beads, though, looks like do come out of Keeks. That's right, Andy just the cojones on this man to just alt by himself into three members of Luminosity. I don't know that he knew that there were three in that tiny little corridor. Probably arrived and said, uh-oh, and just immediately dashed out. No hammer from Gino. They do drop down the Whirlpool, though, to get some poke onto Aquarius. Divine Ruin is on Keeg's mate, so it shouldn't be too hard for him to get that stacked up to try and reduce some of this healing as Gold Fury is now pulled. All Everybody's here, even though Anderson's a little bit closer to the mid wave. He's not quite here yet. He hasn't have the ultimate to come back in quickly either. Luminosity once more. 
with that vision control. Bottom right belongs to Luminosity, right where Barracuda is standing. That's basically Luminosity. Even though both teams have a ward there, that ward for Space Station much less effective than that of the ward from LG. Kiki goes in aggressive with the blink, can't initially find a stun target. Dragonic Corruption gonna come out, Tectonic Shift locks in two, Weaken takes down Baskin early on in that engagement. Kraken comes out too, but not enough to stop Barracuda from getting weakened. Kiki wants to keep chasing Aquarius, but on the backside, Barracuda was able to hunt down Keeg's mate, and Aquarius is just fine. Triple kill now for Barracuda as Clout ends up falling. Gino in a whole heap of trouble trying to dodge these auto attacks, is able to make it back over the wall, but he's de-transforming, and Aquarius is right here. Quadra kill for Barracuda and a deicide as Andy chases down Kiki on the right side. Uh, that's the Baskin effect, right? Even whenever he's not the, the guy making all the plays, you have to assume he's about to make all the plays. So LG dump everything to killing Aquarius and Baskin. They got one. Aquarius barely survives. That extra bit of healing ends up saving him from the damage from Kiki. And then Barracuda just gets the free cast in yes. the team fights. And you might not remember, if you've only joined us in Season 5, Barra hasn't been uh, the guy for the Space Station roster, but you cannot let this guy free cast in team fights. He gets an easy quadra that he barely had to break a sweat on. And I gotta wonder how much of that is, as you mentioned on Kiki, for chasing Aquarius towards the tail end of that fight. I mean, I like the idea of get the Chang'e out of the fight, right? Shut down the heels. But I mean, Aquarius is already on the run. I mean, I, I want, I want your, your, more of your thoughts on this one, Angro, because I feel like if he could turn us back into that fight, could he not have turned that around? I don't think so. Kiki was already pretty low, and Barra has, has a build that is dealing plenty of damage to someone like a Kabraken at this point of the game. Kiki was already pretty low. Barra just gets spoon-fed his Quadra, possibly a Penta if Kiki goes back into Barracuda at that point. By the time that you're half HP and your damage dealers are dead, it is too late to get on top of the ADC. You have already lost that opportunity. You have to do it to, to kill an ADC or get them out of the fight. It has to be early on while you still have a big health bar because they, you, will, you will lose the uh, prolonged trade. It's usually solo laners in tandem with extra damage from their back line with the thorns or something like that that'll prevent the ADC from trading into you. If you're just going mano a mano with an ADC at this point in the game, you're losing. We saw that end up going the way of Space Station Gaming. Barracuda looking like Barracuda of old a little bit there, isn't he? Like 5 0 oh, 1 now on this Jingwei pick. A bit of a comfort pick for Barracuda that we know he really likes to play on. And they've earned themselves the Fire Giant to go along with their big kills. About a, was that, a 7 thousand gold lead or so in their favor as well. 6,600, 11 thousand experience. This game once felt very close, and LG had started to close that gap. But Space Station have reopened it in a big way. As Andy charges up that ult, he might be ready to find a target. Phantom is upgraded now for Aquarius. So there, there is that shell, uh, shell-esque relic, the old, the shell of old, if you will, in that in the form of that Phantom. Space Agent's playing a patient here because Barra's beads just came up off of cooldown. Now they feel like they can fight. Weekend waiting very patiently in the jungle on the left-hand side. If Space Station overcommit, he certainly could be a problem. Good crush damage on Ageno and Cheeky, Kiki so cheeky. That'll bring them down a little bit, but this is not easy for them to siege into this tier two tower, at least not yet. It's already taken about half it of its health though, and I think Space Station's willing to just kind of wait it out a little bit. Weekend's starting to make his move. You now this long drawn out fight is going to favor Space Station as the tower gets down to below a quarter HP now. Another minion wave comes in. Keith's mate is waiting. He's got the ultimate available, but they never really have a big all in moment. Space Station's kind of whittled down that tower, and that's what sustained comps can do. Space Station not going for another Tier 2. They're going to try their luck at a Phoenix. This surprises me because that Tier 2 was pretty hard fought. Yeah, Tier 2 on the right, I think, is a safer call here for Space Station. It took them so long to, to break a Tier 2. I, I think that going for a Phoenix would have been a little bit too ambitious. And I like this from LG because all the time we see the Fire Giant mean way more than just a Fire Giant because you get all that gold from the towers. It's a big right. gain. Like, what, like... What, 4,500 to get all the Tier 2 towers in your team's favor? Yes. LG are going to fight on these Tier 2 towers and not give that up for free. Weekend again, positioning around the back. This time, there's no ward coverage. 
Link comes in for weak on the backside, goes a little bit early and gets blown up right away. Kraken hits Stephinla, but Anister crashes through the fight and sets up Barracuda to take down Kiki. So Cheeky Sprint is coming out from LG, but now Keegs is in trouble. Aegis lets him live through the airstrike, but Barracuda is landing in the tower and finding himself a double kill. Now uh, that's Barracuda of all as he takes down the team fight. And that's where Sir Cat really feels awful to play because in these late game team fights, you're putting yourself in a horrible position every time. Weekend blinks in, but he's got to wait until Kiki or someone else takes the focus right. away from Space Station. Instead, Baskin just beads, crushes his own feet, and kills Weekend when he's on top of his head. And it looks like Space Station Gaming are take this opportunity to try and win the game. Only Clout and Gino to keep the LG base standing up against all five members of Space Station in that Draconic Corruption, but no one's there to help Clout. Anister tracks him down, half health. Now on the Titan, only Gino standing, and that is not gonna be enough. Space Station Gaming, come in and take this first game from LG. And there's where that sustain really comes into play, right? I mean, Fire Giant helps there, but Baskin was pretty low. Yeah. Barracuda took a Phoenix shot, wasn't that low, would have been okay. But the Changa sustain ends up there with the Sylvana sustain and the Fire Giant sustain. You throw in a Rod of Asclepius, everyone from Space Station's full health by the time they hit the Phoenix, and that's what enables that possibility to end the game. And it's tough there because I feel like Space Station never really had a big lead until no. they were already in the process of winning the game, and then everything kind of fell apart for LG all at once. But who at home do you all think was the MVP? I know you all are big fans of Barracuda already, and after that game, I'd not be surprised if you wanted to vote for him. Sometimes it's a team effort, and this one certainly was for yes. Space Station but you need one person to make one big play and that breaks the game wide open. Barra got a quadra kill in a game that was <laughs> completely even. It was very, that very then close. became all Space Station. I I'm voting Barra. Well, the desk is standing by. Let's go ahead and get their thoughts on what happened in game one. Let's just get it clear, first of all. Unofficial quadra kill, delayed quadra kill. He did get four kills in a row, but it wasn't official. It definitely wasn't official, but you got to give credit to where credit was due. You do. Barracuda definitely taking advantage of the fact that LG dumped their whole entire kit onto Aquarius, onto Baskin. Aquarius barely survives. Baskin's the one to fall victim, and Barracuda having all the freedom in the world to get those four kills. Same time, though, Baskin on that Scylla ended up getting top damage throughout that game as well, Tolly. The Aquarius' Chunga pick, first pick for me, was a little bit... A little bit risky, but they knew what they were doing, and it works out well. They baited Weekend with that pick because of how much attention Weekend applied onto the solo lane every time Aquarius survives those kinds of ganks. And that was important to separate the experience gap from Weekend and Anister. Every time there was that action, there was one point in time where that first kill happened at around the 12-minute mark. Weekend didn't die, but he did get low enough that he had to back and when you're a jungler that has to back on your own terms it's never a good look especially against an elite player such as Anister. Mm, very good point new fans at home have voted and of course you voted for the young barracuda from the dual lane he had a very quiet spring split totally the lan he started to step it up it felt like and now we're into summer and it appears with the summer sun, Barracuda has come out to play. Well, the spring, every hunter suffered, honestly. <laughs> it was the assassins that were thriving, and Barracuda finally getting his time in the sun a little bit, playing the Jingwei, a guy that's normally really safe in the early game, but you have to play super aggressive in the late. Barra will be very happy with his performance, but one thing I do want to know is, even I mentioned SSG, just keep running these pressure compositions in the dual lane totally and teams are letting them do that quite happily what about trying to like limit that maybe getting the pressure dual lane of the road i just the only way that they can limit the pressure is removing the sylvanas from yeah. jeff Hinless hands that's one of his pressure gods but then he's going to get other things Terror. to be able to set up his teammates in team fights so you got to pick your poison do you want to win lane or do you want to win team fights? And unfortunately for Weekend, in this little scuffle, yeah. couldn't catch the fast basket. I think that was a very big point. That little Scylla escape there from Baskin yeah. and Barracuda pick up the kill was very important. Game one.